your work has is really inspired by this concept of rigorous thinking. And rigorous is a $10 word, and so I'm hoping you can break it down for us today and show us the difference between plain old thinking, which some leaders out there may be doing, and help us get to that rigorous thinking. So what's the difference to you? Yeah, rigorous thinking is the opposite of what I call lazy thinking. So lazy thinking is assuming that you're going to try a random tactic that you see your competitors doing and assume that it's just going to work for you. It's making assumptions that you don't even know that you're making, kind of going through life, just going through the motions. Rigorous thinking, on the other hand, is having a systematic way of making decisions. It's thinking about the upside and downside. It's thinking about trade-offs if you take a certain path. You're thinking about what success looks like before you even start. You're thinking about um, implications that your actions might have down the line for yourself, for your team members, et cetera. So it's really a way of uh, questioning your own thought process and decisions to make sure that what you're about to do actually makes sense. Mm. So this is a much deeper level of thinking. Most people, it's a little bit of gut. It's It's a little bit of some group think. But you're saying we've got to really think through every facet and kind of get a 360 view of a problem as we're thinking through it. Yeah, exactly. And I think the thing that trips some people up is they think, well, rigorous thinking sounds hard. It sounds like it takes too long. I don't have time to think rigorously. But the ironic thing is that thinking rigorously actually saves you time in the long run. Because what ends up happening usually when you think in a lazy way is you jump straight to taking action. And you realize, you know, a week in, two weeks in, a month, a couple months in, that something something goes wrong. There's an avoidable mistake. And And usually in those situations, if you had just taken five to 10 minutes to think about your situation a little bit more before jumping straight into action, you would have realized that X or Y was going to be a problem. And so Mm rigorous thinking is actually a way of saving yourself time while still acting quickly, shipping quickly, and staying on your feet. So what does this look like in your day-to-day life as someone who practices rigorous thinking? What does it look like to make that shift uh, in just the everyday? Yeah, in everyday life, it looks like thinking about what next steps would look like if we decided to do something. So as a leader, as a business owner, as a creator, you're making a lot of decisions on a daily, weekly basis. And you don't always have full information. You're often working with imperfect information. And Rigorous thinking means thinking about if we were to go ahead with this idea, what what would we actually do? What are what are the distinct steps that we would take that would get us to our goal? And what's the hard part? I think a lot of times we think about a grand plan and it all kind of it's kind of vague and all kind of mushed together. And we're like, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. But thinking about what that hard part is before you start helps you think about whether or not you have the assets and levers to be able to tackle that hard part. What you don't want to happen is to distract yourself with busy work so you feel like you're making progress, you feel like you're taking action, doing a bunch of these little things that are actually pretty easy if you kind of, you know, dig down deep, you know that, you know, I can do this part. But the part that you're not sure about, you kind of put off, right? That's very normal. We're we're kind of afraid of it. We're not sure how to figure it out. But that's the part that you really should figure out because it might mean doing or not doing the thing in the first place. So we tend to do the easy things that don't take a lot of thinking, and then we procrastinate on the stuff that takes the deep work because we want to make sure we get it right. And so rigorous thinking can help us get there. And you mentioned this can help us save time. It's going to help us make better decisions. And it helps us think through the impact it has not only on the business but on the team. That seems to be a big part of this. As a reactive leader, you're not always thinking about, well, how is this going to make XYZ feel over here and this person over here. Is that part of it? What is, how does this connect with the team that you're working with? Rigorous thinking is a huge part of building culture and building a strong team. So usually if you're in a position of leadership, you got there because you're good at both strategy and execution. Uh, but if you are now a leader and you're managing a team, you can't do everything yourself anymore. Your effectiveness is directly dependent on how strong your team is. And so what what ends up happening, though, is that because leaders are usually so good at doing everything themselves, their team member will come to them and say, you know, George, should I do this? Or Wes, you know, I want to do this. Do you approve? 
And our, our instinct, our reflex as a leader is to answer that question. We say, no, don't do that because X. Or, uh, no, that's not a good idea. Let's not try that. But what your direct reports end up hearing is a lot of no, no, no. Why is George always telling me no? Why is Wes always telling me no? And, you know, in our own heads, we have the reasoning. We have the rationale. We have the thought process. But we don't always have time to explain it to our direct reports. So rigorous thinking is actually going one step beyond just explaining it. It's actually letting the direct report think for themselves. So instead of answering the question the next time your direct report comes to you with something, ask them, what do you think? How do you think this could work? Right? If you automatically have an answer of, you know, oh, I, I totally know this wouldn't work because X, instead of just saying that, help them come to that conclusion themselves. Ask them to think through, well, how would this part work, right? The, the part that you think, you know, might, might be a little bit difficult. Um, ask them for examples of how something like this has worked elsewhere, you know, and it doesn't mean we have to have done something before to be able to do it, but if this is a pie-in-the-sky idea and you have no, um, it's not rooted in anything, it's harder to imagine that this might work for us. But if you say, oh, like some, this company in a different industry or this other individual tried something and I see patterns, I see rhymes of how it could work for us in our situation, then that makes the whole team more confident that this, this tactic is worth trying. So instead of just saying no all the time, it teaches your team to think for themselves and helps them um, assess a situation so that long-term, they become more independent. They're not, not always needing to come to you. They actually can ask themselves a lot of questions that you would have asked them anyway. And so by the time they come to you, they've already asked themselves this initial set of questions, so they're more likely to come to you with higher quality ideas.